Good morning, actually good afternoon. Welcome to Thoughts from the Word. Uh, I am Pastor David Zavadil from Eastminster Presbyterian Church. We're glad to have you today to hear from God's Word. We're going to pick up in the book of Philippians chapter 1 with a verse that probably everybody is familiar with. Philippians 1 verse 21. Hear now the word of the Lord. For me to live is Christ and to die is to gain. Paul writing to the church of Philippi is in prison uh, in, in Rome and writing to them uh, and thanking them for their support but also seeking to encourage them. He has just spoken to them in his writings of his prayers for, uh, for them uh, and his hope for the gospel, that the gospel is going forth, that even the members of the Praetorium Guard have come to know the Lord and, and that the gospel is being effective. And he's reached this point in his life where he's wrestling with ministry and life. He understands that and is sharing with them that my faith in Christ, my walk with Christ, uh, is what drives my life. And so as I live today, I'm living for Christ. But I also see and understand that if I die, I gain. I gain because I will be with Christ for all eternity. It's a thought that we all should be wrestling with. Every day we should be seeing that we really have two goals that are not conflicting goals, but are goals that build upon each other. Our goal to live for the glory of Christ each day. For remember, our catechism tells us that our chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. That's our purpose. We're to be glorifying Him. But at the same time, our goal in, in life eternally is to be with Christ. So we should be yearning and seeing that whatever happens to us physically only leads to something even greater, something even better, and that is to be with Christ for all eternity. Paul, at this time in his life where he's realizing that his physical life may come to an end, understands that while he's here, he is to glorify Christ. And so for him to live is Christ. But he also understands that no matter what happens, to die is to gain. May we all understand that and be able to use that as a driving force in our walk with Christ each day. Let's hear from the Valley of Vision today. This, is, this reading is entitled, Love Shed Abroad. Gracious God, my heart praises thee for the wonder of thy love in Jesus. He is my heaven's darling, but is for me the incarnate, despised, rejected, crucified sin-bearer. In him thy grace has almost outgraced itself. In him thy love to rebels has reached its height. O oh, to love thee with a love like this. My heart is stone, melt it with thy love. My heart is locked, let thy love be the master key to open it. O oh, Father, I adore thee for thy great love in the gift of Jesus. O oh, Jesus, I bless thee for resigning thy life for me. O Holy Spirit, I thank Thee for revealing to me this mystery. Great God, let Thy Son see in me the travail of His soul. Bring me away from my false trust to rest in Him and Him only. Let me not be so callous to His merit as not to love Him, so indifferent to His blood as not to desire cleansing. Lord Jesus, Master, Redeemer, Savior, Come and take entire possession of me. This is thy right by purchase. In the arms of love enfold and subdue my willful spirit. Take, sanctify, use my every faculty. I am not ashamed of my hope, nor has my confidence led me into confusion. I trusted in thee regarding my innumerable sins, and thou hast cast them behind thy back. I trusted in thee when evils encompassed me, and thou broughtest me out into a wealthy place. I entrusted in thee in an hour of distress, and thou didst not fail me, though faith trembled. O God of the eternal choice, O God of the restored possession purchased on the tree, O God of the effectual call, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, I adore thy glory, honor, majesty, 
power, dominion forever. Amen. Well, that was a powerful reading, and I pray that we can apply that to our lives today. Let us set our eyes upon God. Let's go before the Lord now in prayer. Almighty God and Father, may our eyes truly be set upon you. We each, every day, in ways that we don't even like to speak about, have sinned against you, fallen from your grace and your mercy by our own strength. And yet at the same time, that grace and that mercy redeems us and carries us and brings us back. For we cannot out your grace. We cannot out your mercy, O oh God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being our God, for granting us your strength, for giving us your peace, for uh, bringing us your comfort. I pray that you would be with all of my brothers and sisters who are watching this right now. I pray that as we pray together, that our hearts would be enriched, our faith growing, and that we would draw ever nearer to you for the glory of Christ. I pray that we too, like Paul, would wrestle with this thought that to live is Christ and to die is to gain. And that we would see that whether living were to glorify you or dying be in glory with you, that it is all about you, O oh God. May our faith grow today. May your name be lifted up. May you be exalted. And Father, we pray that you would just touch each life uh, watching and listening today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And amen. Well, I pray you'll join us again tomorrow as we hear some thoughts from the Word, as we pick up in Philippians and continue our look at this book. May God bless you, and we'll see you again tomorrow.